The Great Barrier Reef is one of the seven wonders of the natural world. It is 1200 miles and composed entirely of living organisms. It is the most extensive reef system in the entire world. It is larger than the Great Wall of China and the only living thing on Earth visible from space. The reef is a breeding area for humpback whales migrating from the Arctic and is also the habitat of a few endangered species, including the dugong, the sea cow, and a large green sea turtle. In recognition of its significance, UNESCO listed the Great Barrier Reef as a World Heritage Site in 1981. Why is the reef in danger? Changes in the ocean are becoming more and more drastic. If the world continues the path it is taking without any drastic change, humanity might lose the Great Barrier Reef. Since the 80s, 50% of coral on the reef has died due to coral bleaching. Bleaching doesn't directly kill coral, but it weakens them severely, often later leading to death as they become more and more vulnerable to disease. Further causing destruction of the reef is ocean acidification. Since the 1700s, about 30% of the extra carbon dioxide that humans have pumped into the atmosphere has been absorbed by the oceans. This changes the ocean's chemistry, making, them more, making it more acidic, which makes it harder for corals and other marine animals to build their calcium-based skeletal structures. Further causing destruction is the rising sea levels and sea temperatures. The fast-moving changes caused by climate change mean that shoreline plants and animals don't have time to adapt to changes in sea level or temperature. While sea level has risen and fallen over thousands of years, climate change means it happens much faster, so life isn't able to adjust as quickly as it should. Further factors affecting the destruction of the coral reef are climate change, poor water quality, coastal development and fishing. What is currently being done to preserve the reef? The Reef 2050 Long-Term Sustainability Plan is the grand plan for protecting the Great Barrier Reef all the way through to 2050. It's how the Australian Government answered the UNESCO World Heritage Committee's concerns that it would otherwise put the risk put the reef on its uh, list of World Heritage Sites in danger. Further programs being implemented are the Reef Trust. The Reef Trust will combine both Australian Government and private funds to focus on improving coastal habitat and water quality throughout the Great Barrier Reef. The Australian Government has committed over $700 million to the Reef Trust to address key threats to the reef. A further um, program is the Great Barrier Reef Gully and Steam Bank Joint Program. The program will focus on remediating gully and steam bank erosion to significantly reduce the amount of sediment entering the reef. Further, the North East Shipping Management Plan plans to set out Australia's shipping safety and environmental protection rules and identifies measures to manage risk associated with shipping in the Great Barrier Reef, the Coral Sea, and the Torres Strait regions. What is satellite technology? A satellite is an object in space that orbits or circles around a bigger object. There are two kinds of satellites, natural such as the moon orbiting Earth, or artificial such as the ISS. Artificial satellites did not become a reality until the mid-20th century. The first satellite was Sputnik, a Russian beach ball-sized space probe that lifted off in October 4, 1957. That shocked much of the Western world as it was believed the Soviets did not have the capability to send satellites into space. Other countries began to send their own satellites into space as if benefits rippled through society. Weather satellites improved forecasts, even for remote areas. Land-watching satellites sucked to the Landsat series track changes in for forest, water, and other parts of the, ocean's surf of the Earth's surface over time. Telecommunication satellites made long-distance telephone calls and eventually live television broadcasts from across the world a normal part of life. Later generations of satellites helped with internet connection. How can we use satellite technology to save the reef? What is being done now for the reef is more focused on preservation rather than detection. Using satellites will help allow the reef to thrive and overcome the mass coral bleaching, combined with our four-step group intervention. Satellite technology will help the reef in three significant ways. It is cost-effective, only, with the only cost coming from the building. Um, it detects irregularities in marine species to identify at-risk species. And it detects pollution sources instantly, increasing the speed of action. The tr traditional disadvantages of using satellites were the high costs associated with building and launching the satellites. That has now become less relevant due to the mini miniaturization of computers and other hardware. It is now possible to send much smaller satellites that can do science te telecommunications and other functions in orbit. 
It is common now for companies and universities to create CubeSats, or cube-shaped satellites that frequently populate low Earth orbit. Satellite technology is incredibly sustainable. It can be used for an indefinite amount of time, and there is no pollution at all besides building. Our group chose to present a four-step intervention, the first being detection by using satellite technology, the second surveillance by using drones, the third correction by gene editing, and the fourth regrowth by fragmenting. I believe adoption of our intervention will increase the likelihood of preserving the reef, whilst allowing it to grow and thrive.